Okay, we'd like to welcome you live to Fabric Chicks. Um, we have a special guest, Leilani Purvis, in the studio today. She's going to be showing us several things. Um, the five inch dimensional folded coasters, quick and easy gifts for you guys. We're trying to find fun stuff for you to do for the Christmas holidays and just to pop in the mail to give to people because everybody's needing to be acknowledged and know that you care. So this is quick. You can use up your scraps. Don't tell me you're going to use up your whole stash because it's only going to take this much of your stash. So um, you won't even miss it. Um, and then she's going to show us a, a lot of different ideas of how you can use projects um, and make totally different projects with the same patterns. So I'm just going to turn it right over to Leilani, and um, that way I know that I'm, I can get close-ups while you're filming. Cool. Okay. All right. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, I was looking for something quick and easy, small for gifts, and so I thought I found this pattern for the coasters, and these are five-inch squares. So you basically need five five-inch squares and a five-inch um, square of batting. Any kind of batting would be fine. Um, Beth had some stiffer batting that might hold up a little better, a little stiffer. But basically, you start with... Hey, Beverly Ann, how are you? You start with... Your batting on the, should we do it down here? Or up here? Either, wh either wherever you want. It's probably down. Here. I can follow you anywhere. All right. So you start with your batting down first and then one five inch square on top. And this is just all how you set it up before you sew. Then you lay one folded part with the raw edges. So in other words, these are your five inch Come on. So that's your five inch square. You iron it. I like to iron it. Your raw edges go here. And you want to do alternating colors. Your back can be one color, but then you want a little contrast or something fun just so it shows up. So I chose this combination. You lay that down there. Raw edge. Your folded edge is in the center. You lay this one down, and then you lay this one like this. You just fold that up. Whoops. You want your raw edge. All right, can you guys see, or do you want me to get closer? So that's what you end up with, right? Super cute. And what you do, all you do is you sew your quarter inch all the way around. So you're sewing here, pivot, sew here, pivot, here, and here. And when it's all done, you fold it out. These fold under. You can clip your corners. And your batting. So when you fold it out from the center, it's all finished right so it's oh, so very quick yeah see there's your batting underneath so i can undo this one just to make it perfect a little more self-explanatory but these go so quick and these are five inch squares but these are actually four and a half so you can go any way you want it's kind of a good idea if you're if you you're working on a project to just cut some extra five inch stri uh, squares and put them aside so you can make these later. That's exactly what I was doing with a lot of my extras. All right, so this is what you ended up with when you sew. Phyllis and Carolyn say, "Hey, Leilani." Hi, guys. So this is how you sew it, right? This is all layered. Your batting, your five inch square your folded pieces with the raw edges on the edge, you're folded here, and at, you sew all the way around, and then you fold it back. At the center. At the center. So you gotta make sure they all, it kinda looks like a mess for a second. And you 
bring all those out. And bring poke your little corners out. Your turn it all tool will is perfect for poking out those corners. Right. But if I could if I was lazy and didn't want to get up and find my turn it all tool, I might use a pen or pencil. Right. So you just poke it. So you do see the batting under there. Um, what I do is I give it a, a good steam press on top. We'll switch over to this. Well, one. and if you were into slow stitching, you could embroider or something well, if you I, wanted. Well, that's what I ended up doing. Oh, perfect. That's a perfect uh, solution. Yeah, I ended up stitching just a little bit in here. I don't know if they can see. Yep. Um, and here. Just to secure it, because I figure some people may want to wash them right. once in a while. Um, yeah, so you can do either way. You can either not stitch or stitch. Depending on how much of a hurry you are to get them to take them to your girlfriends. Yeah, but those hold pretty well. And then you can also fussy cut, you know, so just keep in mind where squares are going and then highlight your little motif if you want. So you can do holiday ones. They'd you know, be it'd be cute to do so, Christmas ones, and then oh, when exactly. you go to Thanksgiving, give them to everybody that's at the Thanksgiving dinner. Well, what I I thought would be so cute, which is what it, these are to for the daughter, just kind of stack them in a real cute way. Oh yeah, and throw a ribbon on. Super cute. So you could do yes. four, six, eight, ten, however yeah. many. Yeah, and any color combination. So you could do metallics for Christmas. Mm -hmm. for and Halloween. for me, it might be a good thing to just have wherever I'm sitting because I can put my needles into them so I don't lose my needles also. Yeah. As little, opposed little, to a wooden little coaster. Cushions. Yeah. But there's so many cool combinations, you know, so your bottom piece can be totally different than your top pieces if you want. You can either coordinate them or not. Um, this one... I did the same just to highlight because yeah, I had a bigger super motif. cute. Yeah. And yeah. then here. Adorable. Or, I mean, they could use either side. Right. Whatever and, kind of mood they're in. Right. Mm -hmm. And boutiques, you can mix and match all you want to. So I just cut these up this morning. And Beverly Ann says, great stocking stuffers. So true. And Carolyn says, she's made those. They're so fast and easy. They really are. Um, Looks fun, quick, and easy, says Dorothy. It's true. Um, okay, Karen wants you to show it one more time. She wasn't ready to take notes yet. Oh, no, we're um, taking notes. Hey, Peggy, I need to um, <laughs> text you. I know. I just, um, I have to wait till I'm in, I, I'm responsible enough to know what I'm texting you. <laughs> I know. Otherwise, if I just text random answers, I won't remember. Okay. Um, hey, Mo from Idaho, how are you? And Karen, I hope you're enjoying the grandkids still up in Mount Shasta. I will totally wait till Friday's sale before I ship your ruler holder. All right, so we'll start with this again. So you start with your five inch batting, or in my case, four and a half inch because I goofed up this morning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But it doesn't matter what size they are, as long no, as your exactly. coasters are all the same size. You could do six inch. Right. Yeah, yeah. So you do your batting. One. I mean, you could do like 10 inch and make them into placemats. Yeah. Uh huh. Or, or, how, or hot 12. pads. Ooh, oh, hot, hot pads would be a good idea too. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely would want to stitch them though. Yeah. So, oh, so many ideas. Your coasters could match your placemats, which match your. Oh, matchy, matchy. Oh, matchy, my goodness. Matchy, 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 the matchy. options are limitless, girls. Oh, my God. So you just want to remember that whatever is going on top of the batting will be the back. So if, if you want to plan that far in advance. So you do your batting, your five inch square. Yeah, if you use Insul Bright, then it would um, protect your yeah. surfaces. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So you lay with your, this is another five inch square. So how many five inch squares do they need total? Five. Okay. One for the back and four to make the folded right. top side. And one batting. It, that's a great idea for all your scraps of batting. Oh, yeah. And I have so many scraps of batting, girls. I'm getting ready to send them to the girls that make dog beds. But if you guys want them, I'm happy to throw them into your packages. So just uh, make sure your raw edges around where you're going to be sewing, your folded edge is in the 
center. In the center. That kind of dark. So whatever way you want to go. Then you lay. How did I do this? You just want to weave it. Okay, so that's the trick. It has to be woven. Woven. Okay, girls, you see that? It has to be one so, on top and one yeah. on bottom. Yeah. One of each one right. is, well, that one, yeah. Is that right? Mm. Okay, wait, we've got a bottom, a top, a top, and then a bottom. I think that looks woven to me. Yeah. I think as long as this is what it looks like, you've got these two and these two, I don't think it really matters how you layer them. As long as they're interwoven. See how those are loose. As long as you don't stitch up the center, you're gonna be good, girls. <laughs> and then you sew all the way around where it might. So don't, you're not gonna leave an opening on the outside edge to turn no. it inside out. You're no. turning it inside out from the center and it's all complete. You don't have to do anything else. So in other words, and you do a, a small seam, like an eighth of an inch seam. I, I think I can clip this. But okay. It could be a quarter inch or eighth of, uh, eighth of an inch, just so you make sure you capture all your edges. That's the main concern. Perfect. So you sew all the way around, pivot, sew, sew, and then you turn the whole thing inside out. There we go. Karen, you know I'm just giving you a hard go. time. She said, <laughs> she says it's quite cold in Mount Shasta, but beautiful. She just got back from a walk. The internet isn't great, which is why she wasn't able to see the beginning of how the coasters are laid down. She didn't really need to see it twice. She just missed the first time. Ah. That's okay, Karen. I know I always need to see everything at least twice, maybe five times. There you go. Of course, I need to poke my corners out. Anna Simpson, I could totally see you making these for all the ladies at church. Aren't they perfect? Gosh, what else, you know, throw in ideas if you think of anything else. Yeah. Like I say, you could actually do, I thought about doing a decorative stitch that would go back and forth. Mm, that would be fun too, yeah. You know, so you could do even a, a stitch in a snowflake or a flower. If yeah, to practice on, some free motion if you wanted. The options are really, you could really get kind of wild with yeah, these. Yeah, because you could stitch here, mm -hmm. do like a cute little motif. Yeah. I'm kind of excited. It, it, there's a lot of possibilities with this. I, I don't even know where I came across this, but I go, that's perfect. Right. That is perfect. So that's the coasters. Any other questions? No. Okay, ladies, let me know if you have any questions about the, the coasters. Otherwise, we're going to move on. Um, Leilani brought um, some patterns that she's written and designed, and she's going to tell us kind of her concept behind it and how it's really a beginner um, a beginner way to kind of step outside of the box and get pretty creative. You want me to come over there or you want to? No, I'll bring okay. it over here. Okay. Um, so, all right, Anna, when you have a chance, stop by the shop. I have a little present for you. So can we, you see the table? Yep. Okay. So I know you all can do this. This is they're this like, is the pattern. They're almost like kindergarten drawings. They, they don't are. scare me at all. They are perfect. Look at this. And the cat's tail you can tuck in either on this side or that side. I'm just showing you the pattern first, just so you have an idea of how very simple it is. All right, so you cut these out, right? You lay them on your, your fabric, cut it out, and attach it to your, your project. And would you, would you attach it to your project using a fusible? Or you, you can, if you're gonna be doing fusible, you gotta make sure you fuse the back, mm -hmm. and then lay it down and put it on, or you can glue it. Okay, so how do you typically attach them to your backgrounds? I like the gluing method because it's more versatile and I can, I pin, and then when I'm sure it's what I want, then I glue it down. And then later I stitch it, so okay. it stays down. But just to, uh, this is the my sample. So I got a little fancy on this one, but don't forget, these are the same pieces, right? This is, these are your two ghosts, wherever the ghost went. 
Where'd my ghost go? There we go. Right? Okay, there's your ghost. That's your little ghost here. This is the big ghost. And you mm -hmm. can make your ghost faces any way you want. You know, they can be scared. They can be happy. They can be crazy looking. And these are, this is the, the larger pumpkin. And this is the smaller pumpkin. And what I've done is for the larger pumpkin, I actually went two to make it wider, right? But you could only do three like I did the little, mm -hmm. little one. This one only has three. But what's really cool is you can see the background because you're cutting these out and you see the background, which gives it some depth. Yes depending on your background. Well, and I think because you have a black background or a background that reads black, right. it's perfect. If you had like a light blue background, it would maybe not work. Right. You might want to mush them together. Right, or just, or line, make sure you put a piece of darker fabric or a contrasting mm -hmm. fabric in right. those areas. Or you could use thread and right. your thread could or differentiate them. Mm -hmm. Or even a trim. Or even a trim. Yeah. 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 The more you think about it, girls, the more your mind goes crazy and your options are limitless. So what I've done is I, I chose, um, actually I ended up choosing this upholstery fabric. I, I had this out, bought it from Beth, and then I started laying down some fabrics and I'm going, oh, this would make a cool background. So I started developing this pattern. So I went ahead with the traditional orange and black and then I don't know, it's really hard to see the cat, but I wanted it that way. And if you notice, the cat's eyes are the same as the old owl's eyes. I've just cut them out and stuck them on the cat. Whoop. Oh. <laughs> oh. Sorry, girls, Facebook just flipped you around. Okay, we're back. Um, so I cut this owl out from another fabric. So you can choose little motifs from any of your Halloween or little animals. Um, this is just some cactus from another fabric. So you can add whatever you want from there. But the basic pattern are the two ghosts, two different sized pumpkins, the cat, and then the moon, and the moon is then again optional, and you can have the moon work whichever way you want, this way or flip it, only have half of it. But to finish it off, I did the, uh, this is just a piece of organza that I cut and just kind of stretched and stitched down to give it kind of that spooky, cloudy effect. And then the pumpkins, this is sari silk that I've just cut and stitched down. This is all sari silk and I just kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, stitched, stitched it down. And then again, you can do contrasting thread, metallic thread, any combination. This has got some black tool down just to give it, then again, kind of a, a nighttime look. I was going for a nighttime look. Linda, funny you should ask. Is there a, a pattern available? There is. There is. We're going to have it on tomorrow's Friday sale. But if you want it now, just put it in the comments, and then we'll make sure to add it to your baskets. Yeah. And then how much is your pattern? Oh, we'll let you know. Yeah. Okay, we'll let you know. We didn't get that far ahead. <laughs> um, and then Karen mm -hmm. says she loves the pumpkins. Rondi says she just loves it. Great job. Diane says super cute. Um, Laura says, wow, that's amazing. Um, Carolyn says she loves the black background too. Beth, do you have any of that? Of course I don't because that was in one of the rolls of upholstery. I'm sure that she bought just random, you know, every once in a while I throw together rolls of upholstery fabric that you don't know what you're going to do with, but you just need to collect them for when you do need them. So this is another color combination that I came up with. It has a whole different feel to it, a little more, um, what do you got, traditional? Yeah, kind of harvesty looking. Yeah, so I thought. Not okay. so spooky. Yeah, your three pumpkins can be different, the different oranges. This can be just a nice open background. This could be your ghost. This is uh, grunge. 
And I thought, oh, how cool would that be? Mm -hmm. And this is like a fence. And this is ground looking. And then you could cut out these leaves and add these leaves to the bottom or the tops of your pumpkins. You could cut these pumpkins out or any kind of pumpkin and set them around to give them kind of a pumpkin, uh, what do you call it? Pumpkin field. field. There we go. And these have leaves too. So just look for any kind of leaf that you can cut out. You can do your stems out of either sorry silk or just brown fabric. It's, it's, it's really up to you. So that was one, another kind of more traditional Halloween coloring. Black grunge would totally work. And I have yeah. some. Black grunge would be mm -hmm. perfect for a background. I have some, I'm gonna look, like I think this. I have some canvas that might work really well. So I'll, I'll go see what I can find for tomorrow's sale. You just never know what might be you, there. You have a really cool um, fabric with bats flying around. Oh, it would be great. Perf that okay, we'll, be fun. we'll go yeah. around and pull some stuff for you guys. So this, I'm all into kind of metallics this year. And I thought how this was a little more contemporary coloring, more monochromatic. So your three pumpkins can be the grays with a touch of gold. This is grunge with a gold metallic dot. These could be your ghosts. This has got a little metallic. This is grunge metallic. So it's um, got I learned something new every day. I didn't even know grunge had a metallic. Oh, they, Hello, so Mario. Cool. You're failing. <laughs> and this is... Uh, is this it, the grunge dots with metallic? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. It's so cute. I've used okay. this as Oops, binding. Sorry, guys. I got too excited. <laughs> Just dropping the camera. I know, I don't know where the crew is today, but they're definitely not here to video. I don't know why they leave me unattended. But then again, this is kind of a fence idea or a block wall idea for your, and this was just kind of an open sky area. <clears throat> and then your cat could be the black grunge. So this was just a more contemporary color scheme. But I was thinking, uh, I made one more sample that I kind of went nuts with. I know, Carolyn. I love those grunge variations. See, this is black grunge. Oh, there's some more grunge. Yeah. So that would make a good one. This one I went a little nuts with. I was just experimenting on how wild you could get with the pattern. So this is very, very untraditional, and I just kind of try different color combinations. This has oh, got a like spider it. web, the moon. I may just have it hanging off into a, a binding or a border, I mean. This has got the same organza. This is sorry silk, but in more wild colors with a touch of silver and gold. And I, I did a little flower, what is it? Day, uh, day of the day, day of the type day. Mm -hmm. idea. And then this is actually just one piece of lace, like Beth sells pieces of lace once in a while. And I think I'm- And you have... just have to collect it, even though you don't know what you're gonna do with it. Yeah. And this is just uh, organza. I love the little ghosts popping through the lace. Yeah. So he's tucked under there. So you can get as creative as you want. I've just set in some really wild little guys. Oh, from Nightmare Before Christmas. Some little- Little pumpkins. These are just circles that I had cut out of different batiks and different colors. And I sewed the veins in just to make it look like a pumpkin. It would really be fun to kind of do a Day of the Dead one of these. You could really get crazy I, with that. I was actually going to. Um, just to give you more ideas. I Oh, Leslie says the Tim Holtz lightning fabric would be interesting. I think it would. I'll have to go see if we still have any. So you can, <laughs> like, little animals that you can cut out from different fabrics. You know, he could be down here just partying away for the nighttime. Oh, yeah, I love that. Isn't that cute idea? Yeah. So any animals that you so might So don't find. throw away your scraps, girls. That's not even two inches of fabric that she's got these there. These are so small, so small. And then this is the fabric that the Nightmare might, Before Christmas I got the, the little guys guy. mm -hmm. from. 
And even if it doesn't have a Halloween theme, you could still cut out like that lettuce because it has the face. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, I think any cabbage with a face in it could definitely be used for Halloween. Yeah. And then don't forget for your cat, you you could either, I, I, I wouldn't use cut out a cat, but you could cut out the cat's eyes mm -hmm. and attach it, you know. And then hair. it would be fun to do dimensional whiskers too. Yes. With oh, some thicker thread. I should do, mm -hmm. I should have done it. And even these, I mean, there's some spooky looking cats. So yeah. You could do your whole scene out of these colors. How uh -huh. wild would that be? Right. Well, and if you cut out his eyes and his nose and mouth and mm -hmm. attach that in here, mm -hmm. that would, and then thread paint it on, that would be kind of cool. Yeah. There's so many options, girls. So many options. Yes. The ghastly people would be cool in the background. Oh, For yeah. sure. You can never go wrong with the ghastlies. So you just pick your theme and <laughs> go from there. I mean. Uh, Happy Hauntings would totally be, be a good um, name for this book. Happy Hauntings. Happy Hauntings. But I just had some fun with the different motifs, right? You mm -hmm. just black and white just for that pop of, of color once in a while. Different color threads. This is a great way to practice your free motion quilting. Oh, Linda says she's lost us. We're frozen. Uh oh. What? Uh, Rosie says, hi, got here late. We'll watch video from beginning and try to be on time tomorrow. Definitely, Rosie. We'll have to dock your pay. Um, <laughs> she says she likes all of your ideas of cutting out the small pieces. I know it's super cute. And a lot of us aren't really artists in the sense that we can draw something or we can create our own patterns. You can do this. So this <laughs> gives you that. It gives you the basics. And then cutting out pieces of fabric, um, motifs, and different things. It's really, it's kind of like kindergarten art. It's a great way to kind of jump off and test your, your feet in the waters of art quilting. So what I did is I cut this out and just to get the placement of the face, well, this was from the other one. Where's the other one? Grunge with stars. I swear, I do not think that Mario has ever shown me anything but grunge grunge. And I have probably 50 or 60 bolts of grunge. So you can do your, your tracing. And then I just kind of do little dots just to give me a guide. And then <clears throat> I blacken it in. Or you can cut out fabric. I think this is actually fabric. And then you could touch it up with a, a black pen if you want to. Then again, they can have any face you want, either scared, happy, so on, confused. So on your quilts, <laughs> well, that's, I would be confused. So on your quilts, you're not afraid to use pins and markers and anything. Anything that brings something to life. I mean, you could go back in with uh, metallic pens, acrylic paints, anything you want. It's, then again, it's limitless. Yes. Limitless. Yeah, they, I even cut out like this weird lady who's flying across. You can hardly tell. But you could do Oh, wait, here. I'm gonna, I got to get across. close, guys. I didn't even see the witch there. Oh, yeah. So you could do a, a, a spooky witch or, in this case, a colorful witch. Mm-hmm. You could have spiders crawling up the, the wall. And that brick wall, it, that's another one that you really kind of have to buy that stuff when you see it. Yeah. Because when you start to create, you, like anything, you don't have time to go get your paint. I call it my painter's palette. I don't have time to go find the paints at the store when I'm getting ready. So you need a stash of artsy stuff that you don't know what you're gonna do with, but when you're ready to do it, you have it. So then again, you know, this is very simple. I like the idea of the open pumpkin I think it really gives it some some nice dimension. Well, but and that's lighter you, fabric and it still looks good. Right, so you, you can close it in, or like I say, you could actually take a little bit of trim or just tighten it up and stitch it. And you can either glue or stitch or fuse. Mm -hmm. any of the above. Whichever your favorite method is. Okay. So that's spooky nights. So this is the uh, the original sample. 
Okay, while she's getting the next thing she's gonna talk about, I'm just gonna tell you guys for the locals, we have um, saved the date, but you don't really need to save it because it's this Saturday, October 2nd, 9 to 3 p.m. Um, at Heritage Park in Gardnerville. It's the Fall Fest, but it's like basically all day long. They're gonna, you can build scarecrows. It's a big community thing. Um, food trucks, uh, drink, they're just music, um, dancing, all kinds of fun stuff. So come check it out at Heritage Park, nine to three. Okay, girls. All right, what do we have next, Leilani? Oh, this one is one of my favorites. So if you guys watch, um, <laughs> Leilani painted the background canvas with me last year when she stopped by. So Leilani lives in Oregon and in Arizona. So when she passes through this neck of the woods to visit her her kids, she comes in and, and we beg her to do a demo. <laughs> so this was the canvas. Um, I knew that I wanted to do a cornucopia. I hadn't really planned it out. But I thought, how fun would it be to do a, uh, a plaid pattern? So this has got about three, four different colors. This, Lots of glitter. All, and then glitter paint, I just ran it across the yellow, I think it was. Or maybe the whole thing, yeah. So I kept it open and big because I knew the cornucopia and the squash were going to be quite tight. But if you didn't want to paint a canvas, then again, this is... Ooh, a, I like that one. ...upholstery fabric that Beth carries... I did, and I think. Oh no! It probably I probably rolled it up in those rolls. Hi, Roger. <laughs> so you could pick. Uh, no, I got it. You could pick any kind of plaid. Then again, any kind of pattern uh, for a background, as long as it contrasts enough. I like that one. Yeah, isn't it cool? And then these are these are the pattern pieces. So I just trace these off of and drew them out. So there's different leaves, different types mm -hmm. of squash. So like this squash here would be where, hmm, the I question have, of I the day have, covered have, it up. I might have buried, oh, it might be part of that one. You don't have to use them all. Yeah. You know, I yeah. was just kind of ad-libbing. Giving options. So you, what I did is I, I traced around the outside and this gave, gave me the idea of where to stitch. So when I actually, like this one here is this one here. So I knew that I had to cut this shape out, but to make it look like this squash, I had to do either a pattern that um, showed this kind of movement or the stitching helps. And same with when I cut the batik, I tried to make it look like a pumpkin uh, in the positioning. Or you, you don't have to use uh, batiks, it just is something I like to do. But you go back in with your sari silk, throw your stems in. And you could also use fabric fabrics that already have pumpkins on them and fussy cut them out and put them on there. Exactly. And the, the cornucopia itself, I did in about five or six different pieces, or you could do just one piece or two pieces. You could do this section in one, this section in another fabric. So you can make it look like straw or you can do any, you know, really light or really dark, depending on what you're doing in the rest of your piece. But then again, these are just real simple forms that you trace. And then you just fill in from there. You position them so they look realistic that they're spilling out onto a table. So you want to think about scale and have maybe your lighter ones up front going a little deeper into the shade of the actual cornucopia. And then your vines can be shooting out and your leaves. I cut these berries out. I, these are cut from a uh, Halloween or harvest fabric. So you can mix and match. You can make your own pumpkins or just cut out pumpkins and berries and squash from your harvest fabrics. 
the cornucopia you would have to, if you want this design, you'd have to cut it out. But then I went back in and I did dark stitching. So I gave it kind of that basket look, a little dimension here and there. I didn't go all the way across, but just a hint of that curve. So you just, uh, you start from the back and you work forward, of course. You do layer, and that's why I like to just layer and pin. A lot of times I'll use a foam core board and pin so I can shift and move things around or if I, oh, I found this from this harvest fabric, so I'll tuck that in behind. So you, and once you're real happy with it, then glue it down, stitch it down. And then you just free motion around the whole project. Yeah, yeah. And then I, I sewed down the sari silk. Sometimes I leave it loose on the edges just to give it a little. I don't think where I get the sari silks, I don't think I've ever gotten those greens. Those are beautiful. Mm -hmm. I'll have to see if they've got just green. If, Maybe you got it. Did you have a whole like 30 yards or 50 yards of just green or was it in a multi-pack? I think it's in a multi-pack yeah, or okay. a green multi-pack maybe okay. is maybe okay. what I ordered. But it's really come in handy. Right. I could see I would yeah. use it a lot yeah. in all the landscapes. Yeah. I think the green is probably the most versatile. Yeah. And then a lot of times it'll be green, but the same green sorry, silk will have about five different shades mm -hmm. of green, mm -hmm. <clears throat> which are it's really handy. So I don't know if there's any questions. No, we're not getting any questions, but I'm not sure if it's frozen. Are you guys still there? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if it's frozen because it just has, uh, it says about 80 times that Phyllis um, is watching. <laughs> 80 times? Yeah. <clears throat> Phyllis Holmes, I'm glad you're still with us. <laughs> like literally one, two, three, four. It just keeps popping up. Phyllis is watching. Phyllis is watching. Phyllis is watching. Oh, oh Karen says we're fine. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Do you have any other tricks over there? Uh, She's got all kinds of stuff. She came very prepared and organized. Oh, I oh uh, they said they're listening intently. Um, oh, uh, they said we did go away for a while, but we're back now. Um, Okay, I'm glad you guys are still here putting up with us. You want to see any of the um, textile group pieces? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we belong. Um, so Leilani and Christy and I um, created the Fabric Chicks um, textile art group, of which all of you are welcome to join. You don't necessarily have to come to the meeting once a week, um, although we would love, or once a month, although we would love for you to. Um, oh, look, that's going to be on tomorrow's sale. Those are new panels that just came in. Um, anyways, um, I know it's like we're like squirrels and shiny objects. Um, anyways, um, the Fabric Chicks Textile Art Group, it's kind of just a way that if um, you can be inspired by what other people are working on. Um, and it's basically a group for all skill levels. We love beginners. We love advanced people. Um, and I just think you can never learn too much. You can never have too much knowledge in your um, head. So I think, um, no, the first one was seahorse. Well, I think the seahorse was first. Sorry. Uh, we, so I we've had the group for about a year now, I think. Okay. So every, tell them about it. Every month we pick a, um, we basically pick a theme, a technique, um, or a product or a fiber to use. Um, so this particular month, our theme was um, leaves. Leaves. This past one. Yeah, yeah, but I don't even know what the technique was because everybody did something different. <laughs> yeah, it was like fabric. Um, so we really aren't sticklers. <laughs> we have a theme and whatever, like uh, Carolyn went to the dollar store and got wooden leaves at the dollar store and then modge podge them so That's, you know if you have something you've been wanting to try just kind of go with the theme yeah and, and try that product like fabric magic or or the um uh wash away i think it was wash away one one yes 
But this this uh, one was seahorses. I went ahead and drew out the seahorses with, uh, and I, I ended up doing ink tents, um, which is an ink that you paint or draw on. But the theme was seahorses, so I decided to do a whole little ocean theme. And I set them among their, their coral, coral reef. So I cut out coral pieces and some fish. So it's really kind of an easy pro. You didn't really draw much except for the seahorse, right? Right. right. And how did, did you get a pattern from somewhere or? Just the internet. So, I just, you know, I looked up seahorses. And so you don't have out. to really be an artist where you can draw from scratch. No, you, you well, just, There's lots of cheating here, girls. Well, and there's coloring books and there's different, uh, I take it right off the internet. I, I looked up Googled seahorses mm -hmm. and I found a shape that I liked. And I just ended up flipping them and made it this one a little skinnier. <laughs> this one's a little fatter. And uh, the fat ones would be the males because they're the ones that they carry, carry the, the children. Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, Leslie and Diane want to know what um, October's theme was. Um, it was our meeting was just on Tuesday, and honestly, girls, I can't remember. Uh, we are Halloween do and no for, for I thought October. that was November. Christmas was no. November. Trees was November. Oh, that's right. Christmas trees was November. Yes. October, I think, was Halloween and... Halloween. And what Pumpkins. Pum pumpkins. Any kind of pumpkins, I think. Uh, I don't know. We're going to have to find Christy because she's <laughs> the one who wrote down the notes. We have no idea. Okay, girls? I'm traveling, so it's like... I Tuesday seems like so far away. away. It was like yesteryear. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Rosie, the, you're right. The plaid you showed at the meeting would be perfect for the background. Yes. I think that would be, yeah, I like that. Okay. Wheels are turning. All right. So you can finish it off as much as you want, or you could have just done one seahorse uh, and you can do. Oh, anything. good job, Carolyn. Carolyn took notes. Oh, good. Um, Halloween and couching. So okay. couching means that you're going to lay down like thicker fibers and then stitch over them to attach them. So Halloween and couching, that should be an easy one for anybody. Yeah. And the options really are limitless. When is the meeting for October? Um, I think so it's usually the, Tuesday. okay, last Tuesday of November at four, four o'clock, four to six. And we send you a, we put a Zoom link in the Fabric Chick Stitch Along Facebook page. So if you're not a member of the Fabric Chick Stitch Along on Facebook, go ask to be a member and we'll send, and then you'll have all the info. And but, then it, the actual group is Fabric Chicks Textile Group. Okay, yes. Yeah. yeah. Did I say a, something different? Yeah, you okay. said Stitch Along. Oh, yeah, not the Stitch Along, the textile group. We have too many groups, girls. I can't keep track of it all. But we, uh, we did a wave, and I decided to do a, an ocean wave. with, And this is just a lot of cheese cloth that I laid down with a layer of batiks underneath and some glittery tulle, a little bit of lace is tucked in there just to give some movement and then a lot of stitching. So then again, this was a, a greeting card. Oh, I like that with the um, netting, but then you've got like tool under it to give it dimension. Yeah, I layered all kinds of things in that just to make it look like it's in the background that it has some bushes and trees. And then uh, did a lot of stitching then again. Don't look at the cloud. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> it looks like a fish. It did look like a bird. Then. Oh, but I like, you know what my favorite thing to do is, is to lay in my <laughs> swimming pool and look at the clouds and then figure out what they yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. All different. Things. My imagination goes crazy. So this, you know, then again, I laid down some different kinds of batiks just to give it look like a sandy beach that the foamy water and this is just foamy water coming in so that was waves Rondi, we are zooming on sunday but i also have a shop pop meeting so i'll have you guys in my ear on my airpod while i listen to the ladies although i am the secretary so i might have to take a few notes <laughs> yeah your pods in yeah ear. yeah so you guys might be a little bit on your own. How do you get on your member list? Um, okay, Linda, so go to Fabric Chicks Stitch Along. No. Fabric Chicks Textile, textile Art Group. I think that's yeah. So if you go to Fabric Chicks Facebook page, there should be a place on there somehow. 
if you can't find it, let me know and I'll have, I'll have Christy send you a link. So we had, uh, didn't we have Hawaiian? Uh, no, I think it was oh, fabric, magic fabric Magic and yeah. we had to use Fabric Magic and something else. Hmm. There's always flowers or something. Flowers and texture magic. Or... Tropical flowers. Tropical flowers. That yes. was it. Yes. Tropical flowers. So I chose the Anthurium, um, which is very tropical. And then these are leopard orchids. So I actually, um, then again, I looked up Anthurium plant. And I drew out, all they are, are hearts. If you look at, at these, they're just hearts. So they're just odd shaped hearts. So the reds and then the greens are exactly the same, just different sizes. And then the stamens, you just kind of throw them out. And not everybody does such a complex um, project. No. Um, a lot of times we just do a, cheesy little eight by five, just so we can practice the technique. The whole idea is to practice the techniques. And sometimes you have a topic you really love and you really want to do a great big project. And sometimes you just need a quick project. And sometimes you're not going to get the project done at all. We don't really care. Just join <laughs> us and have a good time. Well, my whole idea is I want to use the fabric magic for part of either the container or part of the plant. Well, in this case, it worked out better for the, the actual um, container. So fabric magic is just a film that you lay your fabric on. You start sewing stripes. You hold a steam iron over it, and it just shrinks up. It's the coolest thing. So this is fabric magic, and this is actually fabric magic in here. This is a cut-up fleece glove. Believe it or not, it's just a green fleece glove that I've cut up and glued down and stitched down. And that way it looks like moss. So it's it's just your imagination if it if it looks realistic, you know, kind of gives that more organic feel. And then I added just a little bit of the glitter luminex paint to give it the highlights because anthuriums are very waxy. So this gives it kind of that waxy, reflective look. It just is kind of an idea to get you guys um, that inspiration to experiment with all the fun different products that are out on the market right now. Are we almost knee therapy and a booster vaccine, Rondi? Sounds like you got a rough day tomorrow. Don't worry though, if you miss tomorrow's celebration at noon, you can watch it all weekend. And um, you just comment, uh, just comment what you want, and we'll package it up and ship it to you. All right. Anything else in your Mary Poppins bag there? Well, not having to do with the textile group. Okay. This is my Monarch Challenge piece. Oh. Or do you yeah, yeah. Leilani is is very prolific. So she just did the um, with Lorraine Turner. Um, this is Lorraine Turner's line of fabric for Free Spirit. And, and Lorraine does a challenge. Um, she's had two lines of fabric out so far. She, her third one's coming out, but every time she does a challenge. And I did, you've entered both of them, haven't you? Right, and uh, I won. And you won first place on the first one. Yeah, the first one um, was a koala. This one was for the Monarch, and all the proceeds go to the Monarch um, uh, Federation to help feed the monarchs, you know, with milkweeds and stuff. And you can do whatever you want. Uh, this is a combination of her calico horses fabric and her migration fabric. So this was for the monarchs. This was a pattern that you could do whatever you wanted with. This is part of her migration fabric but I also incorporated some of her calico horses fabric here and there. And it was my choice on how I wanted to do it. I just did some curved piecing. And to me, it was the um, migration of the monarchs. There's waterfalls and there's valleys and forests. So you really could interpret it any way you wanted. Any way you wanted, yeah. You just had to use this pattern and you had to do some handwork. This is just felted. I think and you I, had to use a 12 weight thread? Yes, mm -hmm. I did 12. This is actually uh, black fleece and white 12 weight thread. And then I added a bead for the eye. 
So, you know, there was just a few rules and that was it. Beverly <clears throat> Ann says, love the Monarch quilt. Wow. And I think, didn't Beverly, I think she won second place. Diane won. Diane it's always won exciting. Six, yeah. yeah. First one. It's always exciting because um, all my people, you know, you're all my groupies. Um, <laughs> you're, you guys are always winners. It's always Yay. so fun when I see the, the winner list and you guys, and I know the people on it. Yeah, I know. I know. It's like rubbing elbows with celebrities. But I, this was the first challenge and it was the koala challenge. And so this, I did one uh, first place with this. It started out an eight by 10 pattern, black and white pattern of just the koala on a tree. And then I went from there. So then, then again, this was using her calico horses um, fabric line. You had to use 50% within the pattern itself. Um, and then I added some Aboriginal fabrics and did a lot of thread painting. I added a little bit of lace, uh, in with his ears here, which gives it the kind of that fluffy look and some, some more sorry silk for the leaves, eucalyptus leaves, because that's what they like to eat. And this is, um, this is hand dyed fabric and I added some wool thread. Then again, this is where your couching comes along. Mm -hmm. So I just ran some thread across that to hold the uh, yarn down. And some a lot of free motion quilting to make this look like a log, make this looks like hair. <clears throat> and then I also use Aboriginal fabric in the border and also the um, corners is where I did the Kookaburra bird. And then Fussy cut it out again. Fussy cut that out. I love Fussy yeah. cutting out the fabric because the work, all the artwork's already been done for you. Yeah, yeah. So I, I did throw in, you know, there's a kangaroo animal in here. There's a seahorse in here. There's a fish. Yeah, so there's a little seahorse there. There's a kangaroo on its side. There's a fish over here. So you just throw in, there's a little bit of a colt here you can mm -hmm. barely see. Oh, you can see them good. Yeah. So that was last year's challenge. And then this is just one piece of ombre fabric here. And then I added her calico horses <laughs> here. Diane says, um, did you win something for, um, okay, wait, I, I, did you win something for having so many winners? <laughs> I should, I should for promoting it. Yes. Yes. Bite your, our fabric crew. Um, Beverly Ann says the koala is amazing. Linda says wonderful. Um, Rondi says fabulous work. Beverly Ann won third. Oh, okay. Um, oh, I think Brenda won first. And then no, Diane Sabo won first. First, yeah, prize. Diane Sabo won first. Yeah, and then um, Brenda Harrigan, you met. She did our. Um, she was at the retreat with us. Yeah, for the flamingo. She's the one who turned it into the swan and got a little bit of trouble. Um, and then um, Beverly Ann won third. So, uh, if you want to promote Sophie's next class, uh -huh. I can. Show okay, her. yeah. Okay, we're gonna. Yes, we're going to tell you about Sophie Standing's next class. So Sophie Standing is out of Kenya, and she does wildlife um, from Africa. But when she teaches a class in a certain country, she tries to highlight an endangered animal of that area. Yeah, something native to the area where she is right. teaching. And so she does very, very beautiful work. She does hand-painted canvases. So I took the class through Beth last February. Yeah. February. Did you do it when she was here in person? No. Okay. No, so we this was on Zoom. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We brought her over from um, South Africa, I think twi twice, maybe? I don't know. Um, but then because of COVID and all that, um, we're Zooming. So we had her in February. And then we have her again, or we had her last January, and then we have her again doing an eagle in January. Right. Um, so I'm just going to try to find a picture. Oh, well. Oh, Dorothy, I love you. She says, I win for encouraging 
you guys to just try things and demonstrating so many techniques. I think you can never have too much knowledge. That's just, that's just my theory just, in life. Yeah. I try to choose maybe four classes a year, so I'm not too overwhelmed, mm -hmm. but the, uh, the animal, this, um, for this class that we did in the, uh, February, uh, with Sophie was a lynx or bobcat. So this is, this is my, my lynx. So I in did. the, in the class, she, she shows you how to paint your own canvas which I like yours. I like the black splutteries. It adds a lot of interest. I did I did this canvas uh, once and then I washed it, added more, washed it again. So it- I uh, like your ears. They're cool. That took, actually, I think the ears took as much time or more as the eyes. And the whiskers are good too. You can really see them. Now that's 12 weight, mm -hmm. 12 weight to, to make them stand out. So Sophie sh shows you basically how to do your uh, fabric collage, but mainly her big thing is the actual thread painting. <clears throat> and that's what brings all the depth, the highlights, make it look like fur. And the next class is an eagle, so you'll be learning how to do feathers, which is a whole nother technique mm -hmm. in itself. And we actually have, I know I haven't told you guys this yet because I'm trying to not get too much on your plates, but Sophie's going to do an interview with us, not tomorrow, Friday, but the next Friday at noon. Oh, cool. Yep. Cool. So I learned so much. This was a month long class through Facebook and Zoom and, or no, we didn't do any Zooms, did we? Um, not with we Sophie. Did we did do, lives. yeah, Facebook Sophie lives. did a Facebook lives and then we did a zoom through fabric chicks once a week for people to work on to yeah. um, just have a, and there was a lot of good exchange of techniques or ideas or hints, you know, people would want to say, you know, my ears just aren't looking right. Mm -hmm. So there would be like half a dozen, dozen of us. Maybe, okay, well, maybe this needs to be lighter. This needs to be maybe a little darker, maybe change your fabric you know, use a different thread color. Yeah, or just sleep and, on it and come back in the morning because yeah. sometimes that's all it takes. Right, which I did. I, I'd i sew for several hours and then just take a break, come back to it. And then there's a scripture here from you. I hope you can now uh, read a wonderful message. I hope you want to see your lace pants. They're coming with you. I think that we need to have like a makeup class or something. Um, because a lot of us just need to finish our lace. So that we can move on to the eagle. Now, I, I know it was quite a challenge because this is a large piece. This is a large Very piece. Very big. So you have the option of going smaller if you wanted to. And several so, people in the class did go yeah, smaller. Yeah. Um, one person turned it into a couch pillow. Mm -hmm. um, but I tell you, you learn a lot because you're able to really do some intense thread painting to give it, give it the look you want. Mm -hmm. And you just can't do that on a smaller piece. Right. So I'm, I'm actually happy that she went this large on this one. And, and then Sophie is available to interact with you personally. Um, but a lot of people didn't take advantage of that because they kind of procrastinated since it was kind of a work at your own pace. Um, so I really strongly suggest that if you are going to take the class that you kind of set aside, you know, a couple evenings a week to really work on it. So you can pick Sophie's brain. She's there available for a month. And then the course with her videos and her tutorials, that's available for, I think, three months or six months. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. Don't hold me to that. <laughs> but I, ever since I, this was my first time doing the canvas painting besides the two I did with you just at the shop. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought, how cool is this to do this as, as a background? Right. And it's just done with your acrylic paints or any kind of paint you have or inks. A lot of times I use my old toll painting uh, paint, and I, just whatever you and got. I, and I took it to heart what uh, Sophie does. She, she takes her canvas out in the back and stomps around in the dirt in it. Mm -hmm. I actually did that. Oh, good. And so that's, I think that there's a lot of dye in the dirt. It's, mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of good, good colors in the dirt. <laughs> um, D Dorothy says her links took her seven weeks to complete, but she learned so much and loves her final project. Yeah. 
And Mikey's so excited for the next class. Good. I'm glad you guys are um, are getting your links done and signing up for the next class. Yeah. Okay. Anything else in that bag of tricks? Oh, geez. Look, she just keeps. I get. I think she didn't know what to pack. Actually, I think she's got everything packed from her Oregon house, yeah. getting ready to go to her Arizona house. So this is my latest fun. Oh yeah, this one is super fun. So I just. Uh... Very modern. Just some curved piecing and some, those are some big curves. Yeah, yeah. I only have done baby curves. Those look like they might scare me. Well, these are just very long, gentle curves with two different colors. And then you layer them on another one and you cut again. It's called a braided curve. So it kind of gives you, you pick a color scheme and then you go from there. And then I added all these little narrow strips another excellent way of using up your scraps mm -hmm. although those don't look like they were scraps they look like they were all coordinated and then these were supposed to be circles but they puffed up too much so i decided to cut it in half oh perfect perfect so <laughs> and, even and when I it doesn't on. work right you can still salvage it just go to plan b so anyway that was that's kind of my latest perfect all right well leilani thanks for coming to join us and um, Leilani is on almost always on Sunday Zooms or um, the Fabric Chicks Textile Art Group on the last Tuesday. So you can always pick her brain. She's more than happy to share information with you. And we will have um, her patterns available tomorrow on our celebration. So join us at noon tomorrow um, for our celebration. And if you can't join us at noon, you can watch the Facebook or YouTube um, throughout the whole weekend in order. So. Um, we will see you guys tomorrow at noon. Have a great night. Go get some sewing done. Get some coasters done. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> get some coasters done. We might have a prize um, tomorrow on um, the celebration. for you, you, You'll have to post photos so we know you actually made some. Okay. Now I got to go find a prize. <laughs> All those promises I make when I'm not paying attention. All right. See you girls tomorrow. Thanks, everybody. Bye.